Okay, we're now going to finish our binary code unit by learning how to read binary code. You should have already printed out and have ready the second page um, from the folder on binary code that talks about reading binary code. These are going to be your notes for this video and this is what will be on the test. Now the test will be over both sets of notes, your binary code notes and then reading binary code and again as we've always done you have the opportunity to take the review test first to review the materials that is untimed you may take as long as you want it will go over what your answers are correct or incorrect once you've taken that you'll take the final exam after you've looked at all the other things in the binary code folder and you'll take a timed final test you cannot retake the final test but you may take the final test only once and it will be timed and you have approximately I believe about 15 seconds per question so either you know the information or you don't now as we re reviewed before binary code is the language that the computer understands it's made up of numbers only there are only two numbers involved it either is either on which is a one or off which is a zero and computers will process this very fast. Most people do not know how to read it and if you think about this if we were required to read binary code in order to operate the computer very few people in our society would be able to do it. But this is all done already for us through programming. Now this is an ASCII code chart and this shows you how the code, the binary code, you notice there are all of the ones and zeros are in groups of eight and they have representing them to the left either a number, a letter, or a symbol. Now there are other codes that will relate to different things. So this code relates to letters, numbers, and symbols and it's referred to as an ASCII code. Information can be found at this link and if you click on this link you can go, you should be able to go in and look at some other information um, about ASCII code. Now, in case this link does not work, I will have a backup link in a folder in Angel that talks about binary code. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And that's what we're talking about, the chart at the left. There are also other codes, as I mentioned before, that will relate to music, colors, and other characters. So if you remember way back when we did the first video over binary code, that one byte, eight locations, or eight bits, um, could go from, uh, include all numbers from 0 to 256. And these would also relate then to music, colors, and other characters. So let's, uh, let's look at color. In some of the older uh, computers, now most of the computers today have a little more color combinations, but there's probably an option there to say that you can use 256 color settings. So that means that within one byte of memory, we can include over 256 different colors. Now let's look at the example on the left. The binary code 0111000 or you could look at that as off, on, 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 off, 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 off would re represent the letter P. Now most students will point out, and they're exactly correct, Mr. Hughes, it's a lot easier to write P than to write four different letters. Again, you have to understand the computer is doing this extremely fast. And the amount of the time that it takes the computer to process those eight bits is about the same amount of time for your brain to think of the letter P. It's happening extremely fast. And that code would be in one byte. Now, if we look at the letter P, it actually has numbers and it refers to that the computer understands. We've already talked about that. For our assignment, we're going to learn how to count in binary code. So we're not going to convert over to the ASCII chart looking for letters and characters. We're just going to learn how the computer would count. Each number that the byte creates represents a code for the computer. Now, early computer programs were often women, and they had to learn how to read all of the instructions in binary code. 
So imagine if you got a sheet of paper and this entire sheet of paper is covered with nothing but zeros and ones and you have to go through and translate that. That would not be an easy task. Thanks to the programming that's already been done, we no longer have to use this and we can simply use the computers enjoy them rather than to work on them. Now, due to the fact that this is a communications class, it is important to know how the process and the computer works and how to read the code even though you might not ever use it unless you're going to go into the industry. Now if you remember from the first binary code video, 8 bits creates 1 byte. And if you also remember the powers of 2, each byte increases the number of combinations by multiplying it by 2. The big difference in reading binary code is that instead of reading from left to right as we normally do, Binary code reads from right to left, and that's probably one of the biggest things that you have to work on. So for the rest of this video, we're going to have to learn to read binary code and convert it to numbers. Now, imagine that we have here the byte. You will notice there are eight different locations. Each of the cells is going to be a location. So if we start at the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. All of these are zeros, meaning they're all off. So if we added all of these up, we get a zero. So the total value of this byte is zero. So this is pretty simple, but it's going to get a lot tougher as we go along. Now, let's stop for a moment and let's go back to the powers of two. This is where the value increases by doubling each time. In the byte above, the cell to the far right represents the value of one. If that cell is on or a 1, it counts as a 1. If it is 0 or off, it doesn't count. So it's a 0. As we looked at the, the slide before this one, if they're all off, they don't count. Now, one thing that you want to remember is if that far right bit, this bit right here, if that is on, the number must always be odd. If that one is off, the number must always be an even number. Now, going back to the powers of 2, and remember we move to the left. We start at the right, we move to the left. The value of the cell will double. And again, you have this on your notes, and you want to keep track of that to help you out. Note how this compares with the combinations from our previous video on binary code. If you remember, the combinations for 8 bits equals 256. So let's stop here and look at this. We start off on the far right, 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. And 64 times 2 is 128. So this slot right here, the far left slot, if that is on, it counts as 128. The next one, if it were on, counts as 64, and so on right down the list. Now, if you total these numbers all up, if you add 128, 4, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1, you will come up with 255. But we told you that 8 bits will equal 256, so we're missing something. And what we're missing is that if they're all off, that's going to give you that extra one. So this is a little confusing sometimes, but there are 256 different combinations in this chart. And again, this chart's been put in your notes to help you keep track of the bit or the cell values. So let's do the first one. When you're looking at the byte above, and again, I'm using the term byte loosely, it's created so that you can understand it, you'll notice that only the left two bits, I'm sorry, the right two bits, I got a typo there, our cells in this case are both on. All of the other bits are off. They do not count. So again, remember that this is all the computer knows, on or off, and it happens very, very fast. The far right bit has a, uh, ha has a value of 1, and it is on, so we count it. The next bit has a value of 2 because it is on also. So we count it. So we add 1 plus 2 and we get 3. So in binary code, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 
equals the number 3 as we humans would understand it. Now, try again. Make sure you look at the chart in your notes to help establish the value of each bit or cell. Make sure you read right to left. Calculate the value of this byte. You should have come up with a total of 42. The values that are on are 2 plus 8 plus 32. Now, I want you to take a moment and I want you to look at these two bytes. They are opposite. They are different, rather, not opposite. But make sure that you can read in binary code each of these and stop the video for a moment to see if you can do this correctly. Now, as you look at this, you will notice that our first slot right here is off. We don't count it. The next one is a 2. The next one we don't count. The next one is 8. The next one we don't count. The next one is 32. The next one we don't count. And then the last one is on 128, so we count that. So, if we look at this, we add 2 plus 8 plus 32 plus 128, and we get 170. This one should be a pretty easy one. The only one that is on is the 1. 1 plus nothing else equals 1. Again, remember, if this is on, the number is always going to be an odd number. If it's off, the number is going to be an even number. Now, I realize in this video that it's very easy for you to just go through the video and not do the work. And the bottom line is that's pretty easy with any online um, educational situation. You are going to have to be doing the work on your own in order to make sure that you understand it. Now, if you understand it and you go a little bit faster, that's certainly fine. But do take the time throughout this and make sure that you understand how to read this because it will be on the test and it will be on the final exam that you'll be required to pass in order to get your credit out of the course. So here's three more to try. Again, pause the video for a while, take your time, and see if you can calculate the numbers. And again, remember to look on your notes to make sure that you keep track of which slot, cell, or bit is worth what. Now, the first one, we have 128 on the far left plus 1 equals 129. The second one, all of the bits are on, so we add all of the numbers together, and as we mentioned before, that's going to come out to 255. Now, just as a little hint, as an educator, having all of the bits on is a fairly common situation. And that's probably a number that you want to learn to recognize without having to do all the math. And then the last one, 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2 equals 58. Now, here's another one real quickly to look at. Again, 0. If everything is off, do not count any of them. The next one, only the 2 is on, so you count the 2. And then the last one, you have 32 plus 1, which is going to equal 33. Now, this should give you the basics on reading binary code. Feel free to review this if needed, and do make sure that you understand how to read binary code, because it's a very important part of this, and it will be on the test, both the binary code test and probably a few on the final exam that you'll be required to test. Make sure this is information is in your notes, and as I did put in your notes, if you look in the lower right-hand uh, corner, there's a little graphic showing you what binary code would look like if it were all printed out. And again, uh, in the early days of the computer, people that did programming had to understand how to read this, and it would not have been easy. And we certainly would not be using the computer in our society to the extent we are today if everybody had to do all of that work. Make sure that you review the notes before you take the test. You should now be ready to take the review test over binary code from both sets of videos and notes as well as looking at some of the other examples 
that are in the binary code section of ANGEL. Make sure after taking the review test that you also take the final binary code test. For some reason I always have a few students that take the review test, don't pay attention to the word review, and then fail to take the final test as part of the assignment. Again a quick reminder, the review test is to help you review the material. It will not be counted as a grade. I will check to see if you've done it. I think it's interesting to see and compare grades of students that have done the review uh, with students that have not done the review and how well they do on the final test. And almost always it's a, a dramatic increase. But do make sure you take the final binary code test. Now remember that your final test will be timed and you will be limited. So do review your materials before the test and do make sure you're ready to go. And again, I feel by the time you get to that stage, you either know it or you don't. And I'm not going to give you a tremendous amount of time to take during the test. It offers, offers too many opportunities to